This is no childhood nursery rhyme, and quite honestly, um, it sounds almost ridiculous, but um, there are many people who think these things are a myth. They, they just keep biting, so you dread going to bed, because when you go to bed, you know that you're going to be bit, and you know that these things are going to like torture your mind. Why bed bugs have made such a comeback so fast is one of, one of the great mysteries in entomology. Nobody was expecting this, this level of infestation. We pretty much had them knocked out from the 50s, but now they, they, they've come back. It's like a, you know invisible monster or something, you know, <laughs> torturing you. <laughs> For half a century, the bed bug was heard only in nursery rhymes, a playful warning to not let them bite. But in reality, the bed bug has been around since biblical times, but they were never really a subject of great concern here in America until now. Dr. Michael Potter is an entomologist at the University of Kentucky and the leading scientist in bed bug research. A bed bug is a small, brownish, flattened, blood sucking insect that feeds on mouth. been on bed bug infestations where people have been to four different dermatologists and they couldn't figure out what was wrong with them and had never seen a bed bug and then you get to their home and you flip over their mattress or their box spring and it looks like the Boston Massacre. I mean there's just thousands of bed bugs underneath and they never knew they were there. When these people call with a bed bug infestation, if they even feel they have a bed bug infestation, they want you there now. Not tomorrow, not next week, okay? You can go uh, from you know, just a couple of bed bugs to thousands of bed bugs in really in a matter of months. Once they have these guys, they never want to deal with this emotional trauma again. Every bed bug infestation is a horror story for the people that have it. The emotional scars are there, okay? They are traumatized. You know, would you not be? I deal with all kinds of, of structural pests from termites to cockroaches and everything in between spiders but bed bugs is the most disturbing pest that I've ever encountered I think it was the Hilton Hotel five-star hotel you know, and I hadn't been itching in a long time. So I, I go to bed that night, and I'm laying in bed, and all of a sudden I start itching again. I said, how, how can these have any bed bugs in this hotel? So finally, I couldn't take it anymore. So I go in the bathroom, and they had a bathtub, and I filled the bathtub all the way up to the top of the water. And then I got in the bathtub and went underneath the water and held my breath as long as I could. And when I came up, all the bed bugs were floating. Psychologically, it's very uh, troubling. Because when I, when I got those bed bugs off at that hotel and I went back to bed, I could still feel like I was being bit, but I wasn't being bit. I knew I didn't have any more bed bugs on me, but I still felt creepy. And that stays with me for quite a while. Stories like this are being told every day all over the country. And the two questions everyone is asking, how did I get them in the first place? And more importantly, how do I get rid of them? Folks, this is a typical bedroom, okay? I'm going to show you today how we come in and inspect your home for bed bugs. Anything within about 10 to 15 feet of your bed is where the bed bug infestation is going to be. Here's the place you're going to find bed bugs in your home. Ah, oh man, look at that infestation. You go all along the tufts around the entire mattress. We're going to lift up this box spring and we're going to make a thorough inspection underneath this one. When you pull the cheesecloth back, you're going to find bed bug feces. It's another area that we're going to make an inspection is in the nightstand. Ah, look here. We have infestations all in the cracks and crevices. Small and large bed bugs. Remove the outlet covers. And you must ingest this cavity here, okay? But most importantly, you're going to find blood stains. Where did the blood come from? came from you. This is how we inspect thoroughly as well as we make our treatment. Another success story. They really don't want you to put no more than you absolutely have to. So the days of the baseboard jockey running in, spraying the baseboards all over the whole house, those days are gone. 
today uh, pest control tends to be much more targeted and we tend to use a lot of products that frankly don't have any effect on bed bugs. Alvaro Romero is a graduate student at the University of Kentucky working towards a solution to the bed bug epidemic. We were ten testing in the lab uh, different compounds that are commonly, commonly used to control bed bugs. Here we have filter paper ready to impregnate with insecticide. I'm gonna go here and then we're gonna put a bed bug in there. Tomorrow will be determine how many of them die to determine level of resistance to pesticide in different populations. We want to answer that question. So would you say we're at war with bed bugs? No, no, it's not a war yet. We're at war with Al Qaeda. Okay? We're not at war with bed bugs. We are at war with bed bugs, no question about it. Oh, really? Kill them! Kill them all! Oh my God! Get out of here! You are never going to eradicate or eliminate a certain species of insect. We're searching for other ways to eradicate bed bugs, but frankly, I wouldn't hold my breath for some kind of a silver bullet. I mean, we're probably going to have to work with the products that we have today, and the public's going to have to get a whole lot better at understanding this problem and how to prevent infestations. As research continues at the UK lab, our only choice now is to play the waiting game in hopes of some kind of pheromone or miracle insecticide. But like Dr. Potter said, I wouldn't hold my breath. So sleep tight, America. And oh yeah, don't let the bed bugs bite.